All right, so welcome to the video with respect to the, uh, to the topic of ion channels. And we already went a little bit through ion channels when we went through action potential, but we're just going to go ahead and uh, reinforce our knowledge by further, how do we categorize? How do we further categorize our ion channels? And uh, what are their fundamental properties? We also learned about the voltage-gated sodium channels. What, what other ways are there to open and close those gates? And we learned about the inactivation of the, uh, of the sodium channels, and we're going to wonder how does that take place. So let's, let's get started. And we can further categorize, we can further categorize these ion channels by the amount of ion species going in and the direction. So if you have one ions, one type of ion going in one direction, you have a uniporter. If you have two types of ions, two types of given ions, ion X and ion Y, and they're both going in the same direction, you are dealing with a symporter. And if you have one ion going one way and the other, and other type of ion going the other way, you have an antiporter. There isn't a whole lot to discuss about this because as you can, as you can probably see, this is fairly easy. There's not a whole lot to say about that. So we're just going to keep on trucking. We're going to talk about the fundamental properties, and we're, when we're saying fundamental properties of ion channels, we should really be thinking of two things, of two things, and we already know some of these, some of these two things. When I'm saying, when I'm saying, let's say I'm saying sodium, sodium channel, sodium channel. Well, the first, the first part implies that sodium, only sodium, can go through this channel. If only sodium can go through this channel, this channel selects. It selects what type of species of ions it will, it will let through. So first of all, I would say one of the fundamental properties is selectivity. Selectivity. And when I'm saying selectivity, what I really mean is that if I have a channel, if I have a channel here, and then there's a place inside, as you can imagine, this, this may be called the pore, the pore of the, of the channel. And this is selective. I can only let sodium uh, into my channel when I'm discussing sodium channels. So all we have left is to discover, <clears throat> discover the second fundamental properties. And we reviewed earlier in, in the action potentials the idea of voltage-gated, voltage-gated sodium channels. And this refers to what is going to open the gate, what is going to open the gate. And that is actu actually called the gating mechanism, the gating mechanism. Gating. When I'm saying gating mechanisms, I really mean some sort of, you can say trigger, some sort of trigger or an event that is going to cause the opening, the opening of this channel. And basically when I'm saying opening of this channel, you can think about, let's just say that we have this lipid bilayer here. We have this lipid bilayer. And somewhere here I have, I have a protein. I have a protein, and it's open to the outside. It's just waiting to get, to get someone to bind with it here, to bind with it here. And when I mean opening of this specific, let's just say this specific uh, protein, it means that it would just go through a conformational change and go to this state and just dump, dump this ion in. And this actually happens as well when we're talking about ion channels. They can go from a closed state to an open state. And the open state is really a conformational change in the protein itself. So opening is a conformational change that, that takes us from the, open to, from the closed to the open transition, maybe. So it's basically just some sort of trigger that activates, that activates that specific channel protein. So these are the two basics. And the really important, they're often asked about the fundamental properties gating and selectivity, you need to be able to explain. Selectivity is filtering, and gating is what trigger am I looking at? What is, the, what is the button I need to press? So let's discuss the different buttons that we need to press. And first of all, uh, again, give credit where credit is due to Professor Pani. And this is a slide from his presentation. And we're going to use it, we're going to use it to understand how these various channels open, how these various channels open. So first of all, we already know the voltage-gated the voltage-gated channels. And what we can expect from a voltage-gated channel is once the voltage around it changes, the voltage around it changes, it senses the voltage change. That is the trigger. That is the trigger. And there's a conformational change into the open or active conducting state. So that's the idea with voltage channel. 
when we're talking about a ligand gated, ligand gated and um, <clears throat> signal gated, this is also referred to as secondary messenger gated, those are pretty much, they pretty much the same idea. <clears throat> we have some sort of ligand or some sort of molecule and when we're talking about the signal gated or the secondary messenger, it's coming from inside. This is the, I'm just going to write it here, this is the intracellular. This is the intracellular side. So when we're talking about the signal gated or the secondary messenger gated, we have some sort of, of molecule that is binding, that is binding, it, there's a binding site right here, and is binding to, the, to this protein, this ion channel, and this is basically pushing the button. So once there is this uh, intracellular molecule that binds to this binding site, this channel is going to conduct, and it's going to open. And there's uh, well, similarly, you can have that molecule coming out and docking in a docking site right here on the extracellular side, on the extracellular side. So, in this point, pressing the button would require a molecule coming from the outside and sticking to this ion channel. And this is pressing the button on this ion channel. So, that's the difference between the ligand and the secondary messenger or the signal gated. And what we have left to discuss is the membrane stretch. And you can imagine that membranes are flexible. And when I'm going from a specific from a specific orientation, and I'm stretching I'm stretching my membrane, and I'm going to a to a let's say more stretched orientation. There's some sort of mechanical uh, stretch, mechanical pressure applied on on the membrane itself at some point. And if it, at some point we can actually see or we can actually uh, feel that shift in mechanical stress, and you can see it here, not very well depicted. But let's just say I have my ion channel here. This is my ion channel. It's happy within the lipid bilayer. And if, for whatever reason, the lipid bilayer is stretched, it's stretched, and you can, you can imagine that it's going to be a little bit more thinner at some point, and the ion channel is also going to be stretched to the sides, stretched to the sides. Maybe this is going to cause the conformational change that is going to open it up. So this is the idea behind the mechanical stretch or the, the gating state going from uh, closed to open with respect to the trigger being stretching or, or some sort of mechanical stress. <coughs> so these are the, three, uh, the four gating mechanisms and they're pretty important to understand. One of them is basically saying the voltage changes. The second one is basically saying I need some sort of ligand or molecule to bind to this protein from the inside or outside. And the other one is basically saying, well, if there's a chemical stress on the membrane, maybe that is going to trigger the operation of this ion channel. And what's left to discuss, really, <coughs> is a pretty fascinating idea, because you already mentioned that if we have sodium channels, they can either be open, and once they're opened, they cannot be closed. They need to be inactivated, inactivated, and once they're inactivated, they cannot be opened. They first of all need to be closed. So this is the cycle. This cycle only goes in one way. And we explained what's the idea with this cycle. Why do we need it? We needed to make sure that certain, certain transduction of signals occur only in one direction and they don't go back. Just as a reminder, these ion channels, these sodium channels are closed and can be opened. And the one right behind this signal is uh, inactive. Let me actually repeat this again, just in case you watched the video a long, long time ago. If this is my tissue, and I want my positive, I have positive charges here, and these positive charges are actually moving to the right side, I have channels, I have channels here, and I have channels here. Now this channel just dumped, just dumped all this positive charge. It just dumped all this positive charge, and it suddenly went to inactive inactive. And because it's in an it's inactive state, it cannot be opened again. It needs to wait a little bit before it closes and then goes to its open state. But this channel, this channel is closed, so it can be opened. And that's why this signal will only be able to go this way, because the channels on this side are closed and can be opened, and the channels on this side are inactive and can't be opened. So how do we achieve this whole thing? Well, wh what we're going to do is let's, let's draw the lipid bilayer. Actually, let's draw the, well, we all, all we really need to draw is the, <laughs> is the ion channel itself. So we're going to draw the ion channel. This is my ion channel. This is my ion channel. 
And this is the extracellular side and this is the intracellular side. And actually what we're going to do is let's just say we have some sort, we have some sort of gate here and it doesn't really matter where the gate is. It doesn't really matter where the gate is. What's important is where are, and we're going to copy and paste this so we can mess around with it. What's important is where the little ball is. And what do I mean by ball? When I'm saying ball, really what I mean is a ball. <laughs> there isn't a, a, a way to make it sound sophisticated. When, when the department talks about this element, it also calls it the ball. And we'll see in a second what does, it, what does this ball do? What's the idea? What's the idea with this ball? But first of all, let's close our ion channels. This is the closed state of the ion channels. And let's just say this is this is a voltage gated ion channels, ion channel. And suddenly there's some sort of some sort of positive charges around here. And this is the trigger that we talked about. And it turns and it's opening. And now when it's opening, it's it's conductive. It's in its conductive state. And sodium, maybe sodium ions are going to start flowing in. Maybe sodium ions are going to start flowing in through this ion channel. Well, what we need to understand is that this little ball plays a pivotal role in this ion's channel in active state. And how does this happen? Well, let's consider the state where it's suddenly opened and all these sodium, sodium ions are, are rapidly moving through the ion channel. At this point, when the ions are moving through the channel, this little ball develops, develops an ionic affinity to some sort of complex inside this ion channel, meaning that when these guys start moving through the channel, this ball, this ball develops some sort of attraction to a complex inside this channel. And as you can imagine, would want, would want to come and bind with it. It would want to come and bind with it. So it's, it is really going to take a while. It's really going to take some sort, let's just say there's a, an amount of time. And I'm going to draw the same, the same ion channel with the same ball with the same ball, same ion channel with the same ball. And let's consider what's going to happen. Now the ball is getting closer and closer. It's getting closer and closer to this complex inside. And these ions are still still moving through, still moving through this, this channel. And they're happy and they're flowing through. And little by little, this ball is going to get to get really, really close and pretty much plug, plug this gap, plug this gap here. This is what's going to happen. It's going to go through and plug this gap. And you can actually see at this point that ion channels can't go through. They can't go through because the ball is pretty much, it's pretty much stuck there and it, it's not going to let them through. But this, this channel is still open. Well, you can say that the gate, the gate is still open. It's not that the gate is closed like here. The gate is open, but it can't conduct because this ball is plugging it. So in this, in this instance, you wouldn't say that the the, uh, the ion channel is closed because it's still open, but you wouldn't say that it's conducting. So this is inactive. This is inactive. So basically this ball is rendering this whole ion channel inactive. This is the idea. And you can imagine that after a while, this ball maybe is going to relax a little bit. And this channel, this channel is going to close here. This channel is going to close just like so. And then the ball is going to release and go to the initial position it was in. And this is, is going to be its closed state, closed state. And being that this ball is no longer plugging the inside of this ion channel, this ion channel can be open and can be conducted. So this is really the idea. And if we review this again, let's just say I had some sort of closed ion channel and it opened, the gate opened, ions started flowing in and when ions started flowing in we have this complex called the ball It develops some sort of affinity to an inside complex in the channel and it just wants to get there, it wants to get there and bind there when these channel, when these ions are rapidly going through. So after a while, and this is a function of time, after X amount of time it actually develops the affinity, gets closer and closer and then it actually sticks sticks to this binding site here and then ions can no longer get through. They can no longer get through. So this is a non-conductive state because ion can't get through but the channel isn't closed per se. It's just rendered inactive because of this ball complex. And then after a while maybe the gate closes and the ball relaxes, relaxes back to its initial state. And this is why we can only have 
have transitioned between these states in a specific order, in a specific order. And this is the idea behind the mechanism of inactivation of these channels. Hopefully you found this helpful and we'll see you in the next video.